Good morning, dear brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we're going to be looking at and pondering today. Please read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me. Read along with me, because the mouth goes quicker than the brain, and the brain <laughs> than the mouth sometimes. So please read along with me. This video is a collaboration. Um, I, you know, someone else had a, a good hand in uh, bringing this about. And uh, to you, dear brother, uh, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully this, uh, hopefully this goes, this will go the way the Lord has it, has it planned. Honor all men. Honor all men. You know, in Scripture it tells us, you know, before the death, burial, and resurrection, love your enemies, right? Right? And a lot of people dispute nowadays it's like well how do you love your enemies you know Paul didn't love it what is love what is love love is truth first and foremost okay yes love is affection yes love can be emotion but there's a difference between love and lust and the world today has blurred that distinction okay but love first and foremost is what truth the love of the truth. And what is truth? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. A lot of people like to dispute. Either or, love your enemies. You got one camp of Christianity that says that loving your enemies is don't scare them. Don't tell them the truth. Get them into the church building, get their money, and then feed them garbage. And then you got the other camp, okay, then you got the other camp that they're, they're selective about it. Hmm. Love is truth. How do you love your enemies? By giving truth. And so, and so doing, you'll heap coals of fire upon their head. Okay? If your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. Feed him. Give him something to drink. That's how you love your enemies. Okay? That's how you love your enemies. Alright? Okay? Not this uh, Splenda, saccharine, bro hug, ushy gushy, filthy thing. Or not this one thing of where, well, you got to earn it. It's like, you know, people like to bring up this argument, well, respect is earned, not given. Nonsense! Nonsense. Because... If respect or love is earned, okay, think about this. Who's the one who's dictating the criteria? Is it you? Or is it the Lord? And what happens when, when one person specifically goes to every hurdle that you assign? You ultimately have to be the one to what? To decide to give it. So you love your enemies by giving them truth. And, and we're going to address this. Um, we're going to address this a little later in this video. But nowadays, people don't want to hear truth. So when someone doesn't want to hear, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, what other option do you have but by your demonstration? As what? The way you serve the Lord reflects Him. It's 
But then again, like I said, we are uh, we are called to honor all men. First Peter chapter two, verses eleven on to verse eighteen. Okay. First Peter chapter two, eleven on to verse eighteen. Verse eleven. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 7. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, ye should ye so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. And what are the where can you find those? In the authorized version of the scriptures. Not in the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? God forbid. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. That ye should abstain from fornication. And the fornication and adultery video will be in the description box. I wrote it down. Okay? Sanctification. To be, to abstain from all appearance of evil. To be uh, renewed in your mind. Uh, hold your place, of course, the obvious, the obvious, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay? How you serve the Lord reflects Him. How you walk with the Lord reflects Him. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Amen! And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and there is none good but what? Who? God. Okay? And acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving that to? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. <laughs> but how many of you have encountered that a lot of people that you and I as saints are going to encounter, especially these Christians, okay? How many of them want to hear How many of them, especially with these Christians, you pull out the sword and start quoting the scripture? It's like, I can't understand that. It's like, oh, shut up. You can't understand that? You're college educated. You've been through the Jesuit schools. And yet you can't understand what the scripture says. Now, we've talked about this before. We've talked about this before. The deeper things of scripture, and we're going to touch on this uh in the next video, answering a question by a beloved sister. But, the, the Lord is the one that opens the deeper things of Scripture. There are portions, places in Scripture that you lost people can understand as plain as the nose on my face. You don't want to. You don't want to. There's a difference. It's a diff I've always had a problem. <laughs> with these people, when you, you you start quoting scripture, it's like I can't understand that, dude. I, I I've seen little kids who don't have the Jesuit education in them understand this, and you you're educated. You've been to school, and you've been you know you've been to college. You got the degree, and and you're a progressive. <laughs> Yeah, progressing on the hell, buddy. And you can't understand that. You can't understand this. You're the intellectuals. And you can't understand this. I've always... And that's always... Um, that's always... Um, 
behooved me. You're, I'm using that right. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, oh, okay. Okay, you, you, you go. Yeah, up the dosage, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's reread again. Verse 3, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, your body, in sanctification and honor. Well, how do you, how do you figure that stuff out? Number one, the Lord, you need to be saved. Number two, he wrote it down for you. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Now you're going to see this. The term Gentile, I'm a Gentile. I'm a Gentile. Okay? I'm a Gentile. I am not a Hebrew. My dear, dear Hemetic people. <laughs> My dear, dear Hemetic friends. You dear Hamites. Okay? You're Gentiles. Not Hebrews. You're not. Okay? You you dear Asiatics. You uh, Chinese uh, and uh, uh, the one Korean friend. You're, you're Semitic. You are Semitic. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But scripturally, guess what? Even though you are of Shem, you are a Gentile. Because remember, scripturally, what is a Hebrew? What is a Jew? Okay? There are Gentiles, and then there are Hebraic Jews. Okay? <laughs> All right? Just remember that. All right? Okay? Keep that in mind. Let's continue. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Like I said, you are going to see this in looking in First Peter. Uh, the term Gentile is also a reference is used as a reference to those who know not God not necessarily denoting all Gentiles because Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles okay all right keep that in mind keep that in mind that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter his brother and who's my brother you are because you say you are huh and go pound some sand buddy that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. My, my dear brother, my dear friend, who I emailed this morning, ponder these scriptures please, with your company that you keep. Okay? Back to 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 12. Let's read verse 11 again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. There we go. There it is. Okay? Peter was the apostle unto the Gentiles, as Paul was the apostle unto. Uh, uh, excuse me. Peter was the apostle unto the Jews. <laughs> wake up! Wake up! <laughs> Sorry. Peter was the apostle unto the Jews, the Hebraic Jews. Paul was the apostle unto the Gentiles, and therein lies where Catholicism will put their emphasis and attention onto Peter because he was the apostle for the apple of God's eye, the Jew. Okay? But remember, Peter also in Acts chapter 15, uh, after the Jerusalem conference, the same gospel went to the Jew and to the Gentile. There's none of this um, hyper-dispensational heresy of one body to the Jew and one to the Gentile. That, that's heresy. Okay? That's heresy. There's only one body. 
Okay? There are not two. The only way two come into the equation is when it is by flesh. And we're going to address that later. Okay? But anyway. So this reference here is not encompassing every single Gentile, obviously. He's using it as a reference because remember, remember in Acts chapter 10 how, you know, uh, Peter needed to see the vision of the sheet, okay? It was a marvelous a thing of wonder. It's like, wow, the Gentiles are now grafted into our tree, okay? So he's not obviously referencing every single Gentile but he's using it as a reference for those who do not know God. Okay? Let's continue. Having your conversation uh, honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. There's that thing of good works. Now, these are not good works as pertaining to salvation. What is this talking about? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 2 on to verse 8. Uh, on to verse 10, excuse me. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace, unmerited favor, unmerited favor, the better, Blessing the lesser. Okay. Remember, a lot of these Christians, especially the free gracers, um, twist it. They are the better. <laughs> they are the better. Because they save themselves. Remember that. Okay. For by grace are ye saved through the faith of Jesus himself. <clears throat> through faith. And that not of yourselves... It is the gift of God. See, it's the faith of Jesus. No. It's a reference on to what? Salvation. Not the faith that we are to have, you wicked devil. Okay? Not of works. <laughs> Verse 9. Lest any man should boast. <laughs> Context, people. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, new creature, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And what is the also the follow up with this? Second Corinthians chapter five, seventeen to twenty one. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves the anointed one. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You watch any of these videos, you know what that is. If you haven't seen any of these because you are only uh, relevant as your latest video. <clears throat> okay. Every one of us saints, even you sisters are in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us, the body of Christ, the church of God. Okay? And hath committed unto us, the word of reconciliation. Not wrong. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Again, the way you serve the Lord reflects Him. And this is why, this is why I despise free gracers. This is why I despise them. Because they will jump through every hoop imaginable to justify sin. With them saving themselves by their own belief. And 
the nominal individual out there who will see these people, these pe these fake gracers talking, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and the actual Christ of the Scripture is made to look abhorrent by their actions. And they're serving their God who is the devil. Does that make sense? Okay? See, a lot of us as saints need to really ponder, really need to muse upon, okay, we are ambassadors for Christ. And the way you serve him reflects him. Roll that around in your head. We don't do things for eye service, which we're going to address today, but we are serving the Lord. And our Lord, we as his ambassadors, how do we behave? How do we act in certain situations? How do you compose yourself when someone shuts down and doesn't want to hear the word, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What are you left with? Hmm? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And here's, here's a verse that lost people all these fakes have no concept of. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. Okay? In him. So, back to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 12 again. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Conversation. Speak. Whereas they speak against you, as evildoers, okay, now, now look at this verse, let's dissect this. Having your conversation, what comes out of your mouth, honest among the Gentiles, honest in accordance to Scripture. Whereas they speak against you as evildoers, because we call evil evil and good good. But the world calls good evil and evil good. Okay? They may behold your good works. There are a lot of people, especially these Christians, who can talk a good talk, who could put on a good um, monologue for you. But when it come, when the rubber hits the road, are they walking what comes out of their mouth? Are they walking their talk? And see, there are some out there that's like, well, that's insignificant. You obviously have not witnessed to many people before, have you? Have you? When you get pop thrown on you, when you get gravel kicked on you, when you get spit at. Hmm. And, and hey, 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 I've, I've, I've failed at that before myself. I have. I have. It's, it's quite a thing when uh, someone douses you with 7-Up. And it's quite a thing to refrain yourself. <laughs> it is. And, um, you know, sometimes, my, me, myself especially, <laughs> sometimes, um, you know, <laughs> I <gotta> like, <laughs> but, okay, back to scripture. Whereas they speak evil, speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold. I just, this guy, okay, this guy came up to me, talking to me about scripture, about the actual Lord Jesus Christ, and I, I don't want to hear it, and I'm mocking him, and look at how he's acting. See, when someone doesn't want to hear the word, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, in the situation, what are you left with? What they're going to see Okay. And see people and see and that's the thing about the danger of the eye service, the eye candy, like that like the villain from uh, the Lee Do Right guy, you know, who's a, a, a carbon copy, a copy and paste individual, okay? But underneath, full of dead men's bones. 
good. Okay, perfect example. Okay, just because you take on an adornment doesn't mean that's what's on the inside. And when you're shut down from what uh, comes out, the Lord work out. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. The Lord has given you himself. You work it out. Outward. From within. Someone doesn't want to hear that. What is the what's left? What they are going to see. That's why our witness in these last days, dear brethren, is in. Ouch. Is imperative. Is imperative. Okay? Because our lasting testimony that the Lord will give through us of Himself is what a lot of these guys are going to remember and be reminded of when the Lord's like, Come up hither, we're gone, and the time of Jacob's trouble begins. Whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Verse 13. Submit, and, 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 here, and here you go again. And uh, Paul in Romans 13 and Peter are virtually addressing and saying the same thing virtually. Okay. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it's whether it be to whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. I have had Christians say to me, they've come to hear, it's like, you know, for, perfect example. You know, when I was a babe in Christ and naive about things, it's like, well, in order to be, to be, in, a, be in a pulpit, you got to have the credentials. And then they come see, you got to do what man says. And man says you got to go to a Jesuit college, get a piece of paper, and that will give you the credentials to speak the word of God. Now, granted, a heart surgeon should know what they're doing, okay? But when it, you know, they took knowledge of uh, uh, Peter and James and John and that, that they were unlearned and ignorant men, but they knew that they had been with Jesus. They knew they had been with Jesus. With Jesus? That's the question. Especially nowadays. Okay. I, I, I have. And especially especially in Romans 13, where Paul talks about that. Uh, you know, they, they stop at a certain point and, and they don't want to acknowledge uh, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Well, you're evil if you're going to get, you're not going to go get like a degree to be a preacher or some nonsense. St uh, uh, um, chapter and verse. Take over here. It's like, okay, you're saying to me that God wants me to go to a Jesuit controlled, run and operated cemetery school where you come out with you thinking your own standard yea hath God said saying that there isn't a perfect set of scriptures out there are you on crack cocaine hmm hmm yeah yeah not only am I saying I'm saying. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 15 and 16. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Foolish men. The fool says in his heart there is no God. To behave, act, talk, think. Foolishly is to behave in a manner and where you are representing or acting as if you say in your heart there is no God. Okay? 
You and I as saints, we, we do what the law says because we don't want to, you know, because it's for the, for the punishment of evildoers, okay? Paul talks about this in Romans 13, okay? Read the whole, con read the whole chapter, okay? Because remember, a lot of Christians will cherry-pick that stuff in order to justify themselves and to justify deceiving you, okay? Remember that. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance, ignorance, not knowing better, of foolish people who behave as if they say in their heart there is no God, men, as free. And if the Son shall make you free, the S-O-N, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free. as free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness but as the servants of God cloak of maliciousness that is the free grace community that is the free grace community oh I just believe and receive I, you know repentance is work Calling on the name of the Lord is a word, so I'm free. So hey, a little doesn't hurt. I can go be like the world, act like the world, have no distinction. But I sound like I do. I sound like I do. But see, the walk don't match the talk. Okay? Okay? The free grace heretic devil scoundrel is personified, is the personif personification as free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. They, they use their little self-salvation floor plan as a cloak of maliciousness. Well, I'm Christian. I believe in receive. So that gives me, it's like with Calvinists. It's like, well, that gives me the license to go ahead and do whatever because, hey, once saved, always saved. I just saved myself. Colossians 3, verses 16 unto the close. Colossians 3, verses 16 unto the close. Now, look at that in 1 Peter. Okay? Look at that in 1 Peter. For so is the will of God that with well-doing, doing, keeping, you know, not breaking the law, you know, don't, you know, the speed limit says 55 to 55, okay? You're not supposed to litter. Don't litter, okay? Don't steal. That, that's obvious, okay? Those kind of things, all right? We do that, okay? And in doing those kind of things, especially nowadays, especially nowadays, okay? Where it's all about self. Where it's all about self. See, we are to be what? Strangers and pilgrims. We're supposed to be the monkey in the wrench. We're supposed to be the fly in the ointment. We're supposed to be the thing floating in the punch bowl. Okay? We are. We are. Especially in, a, especially in an American society where evil is good and good is evil. Colossians 3, verses 16 on to the close. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen, amen. Or deed. Or deed. Not pertaining to salvation. But as we have already looked, the Lord has called us to walk a certain way, people. But see, a lot of Christians come to you and say, well, your walk isn't necessarily that important. 
<laughs> and look at the people who tell you that. They're justifying Hollywood movies. They openly swear and curse on their live streams. You know? <laughs> Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. When Paul's talking about children, okay, Rugrats, okay, because when you, there, there comes a time where, like Paul says, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spake as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. There is a point where we have to grow up. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of Christianity, it seems, wants to bring out this child in you to justify devilment. Mm. Mm. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. And you know where you see a lot of this? Where at least I have seen a lot of this is in these disgusting children's uh, softball, baseball, and seeing the parents take it as seriously as if their child is right there playing in the World Series or something like that. I, I've seen that. That is, we've talked about that before. That is some of the most grotesque things you could ever. It's like, you know, and praise the Lord that uh, the grandkids now aren't into that kind of stuff because... I, I, I did. I went with my wife a couple times. It's like, oh, why don't you go with me? It's like, I don't want to say, come on, let's go. And like, All right, fine. And, and we've gone, and it's like, oh. not the kids. It's the parents. It's like, wow, they're making little idols. <laughs> but fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants. Obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Now, use a little common sense. If your master or your employer or whatever is going to have you, wants you to do something that is contrary to Scripture, what wins? And see, here comes the Christian. Well, you're supposed to obey every ordinance of man. What happens when the ordinance of man it's contrary to scripture. What do you do, Christian? What do you do? Obey every ordinance of man. But it's against scripture. At that, obey every ordinance of man. Uh, you go pound some sand. You go pound some sand. My father says one thing. And the law of man says something totally contrary to this. And you're going to tell me that by twisting this that I'm supposed to do contrary to the Word of God because man said so? <laughs> you go on someplace. You go take a long walk off of a short pier. Thank you very little. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Seriously. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Not with eye service. Not with eye service. The facade. The copy 
and paste like the six individuals interesting number that I counted um, who did that in regards to the individual from the Northwest Northeast excuse me where they've in one way whether it's the visual or in mannerism copied and pasted to themselves I service oh, oh oh he's looking now well, well, well let's let's make let's put on the let's put on the facade the false front and then when he's gone hey let's slack off huh hey you know <laughs> beg pardon yeah I get a little mouthy I I, I, I have a pride problem I have a pride problem I you know and the, my enemies know, you know, they, we can get very angry. <laughs> okay, they, they know that. And yeah, I know that, and I need prayer for that. I really do. I have blown several opportunities um, in this walk with our Lord Jesus Christ because I've gotten mad, okay? Because I've gotten angry, not mad. Mad is insane. Uh, because I've gotten angry, okay? All right? But... At least what you see here is, is what you're going to get. Not with thy service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart. Singleness of heart, fearing God. Paul never talked about fearing the Lord. Singleness of heart. Does your heart belong to the Lord? So many about oh God knows my heart. Yes, he does. Do we need to go to Jeremiah to refresh ourselves on that? No, we don't. The heart is uh, evil, deceptive, desperately wicked. But hey, God does know your heart. Yes, he sure does. But see, broken and contrite heart is a heart that belongs unto the Lord Jesus Christ. That of the saint, of course. So in singleness, single, if thine eye be single, straight is the way and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. Do you get it? Okay? And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. See the tie-in? Okay, singleness of heart. Look, look at the, okay, look at, examine the scripture. But in singleness of heart, fearing God, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily in that singleness of heart as to the Lord and not unto men. Dear brother, thank you for that email you sent me this morning. Uh, I needed to see that and praise praise the praise the Lord. Thank you. Because this isn't this isn't about me. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ and his word and serving the body of Christ. I'm not doing this because I want to appear like something to you. I could I could give a rat's rear end what you think of me. I really really don't care okay I really don't okay let's see personally I, this is what I've been called to do and what I do here I'm doing as the Lord will have me to do to make him happy not to make you happy if if my father is happy I'm happy 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 joy joy might, uh, might put that in the description box. We'll see. Let's continue. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And unless you're a Calvinist or a Charismatic or a Catholic <laughs> or a black Hebrew Israelite, right? <laughs> and there is no respect of persons unless of course you're a Calvinist or Catholic 
a black Hebrew Israelite or something like that, right? Let me get that. Give me a break, man. Give me a break. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And what's interesting to behold in this whole thing is Satan has crept in and has done what he can to destroy the family unit, the family structure. I mean, you look at the statistics here in America, okay, of what the family is, okay? A disposable, as if a uh, person, spirit, soul, and body, are now in a disposable shoe. You know, you get married out of lust, and then uh, three years later, you have a couple of kids, and then they, they don't like each other, okay? Because they got married for the wrong reasons. Okay, and then they fragment the family, okay, and then you see on YouTube and all this nonsense, all this nonsense about a fragmentation of what is called the family unit, okay, all right, and the generations that have been coming have been getting, <laughs> have been progressing backward, have been progressing to hell, and you Stupid atheists think that mankind is evolving into something better. You guys are crazy, okay? You guys are crazy. But see, that disintegration of what? That disintegration of Proverbs, it was Proverbs 22, by the way, brother, uh, not 26. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Proverbs 22, verse 6, one, uh, one verse. Uh, actually, verses 4 under verse 6. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares which choke the word, the cares and riches of this world. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from. And how are the children being brought up today? Here, don't bother me. <laughs> I'm watching this on TV. And so what does the kid do? He, he goes and spends his time on his tablet and then has Satan teach him the facts of life. Hmm. 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 Children! Ephesians 6, verses 1 on to verse 8. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, which isn't there in the families today. There are a very, very, very rare select few that are you saints out there uh father and mother who are saints and you're doing that praise the lord you keep your kids out of that school system man i don't care get the, uh, if you're a saint you two are saints and you got children uh, what, what are you doing well well i'll take my children you know it's like you over my dead body you're going to take my kids away over my dead body, <laughs> okay. Over my dead body, you got to know those are those are our kids. The Lord gave them to us. They came out of my wife's womb, okay. They are of my seed. You think you're gonna come over here because I'm bringing up my children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and getting them out of the hands of the Jesuits? And you're gonna come and try? Okay. Come on, boy. Come on. You think you're going to come in and take my kids away from me? Brad, that's a... Look at the school system. What happens to these children in the school? There's, there's a kid uh, that lives upstairs. Sweetheart of a kid. Bright. Talks about evolution. Evolution. As if it's scientific. Okay? Being taught gender equality 
rather blurring gender. There's the Jesuits for you. And see, in this day and age, in this society, dear people, when you and I as saints seek to live our lives in accordance with Scripture, especially nowadays, they don't know how to handle that. Because, because what has Satan done with Christianity? A Christian is a carnal individual. You can have your, hey, believe and receive. You can be, nothing has to change. You can go ahead and do everything that a worldly person does. It's okay. You believe and receive. But hey, you can still do everything you used to. I mean, you, you, you probably shouldn't. But hey, don't worry. You're in now. So these little frilly things really don't matter. That's, that's what devils tell you. And see, most people, not, not all, most people, especially that we have encountered, most people at least have enough sense in their heads when they encounter a Christian who is no different than they are in manner, behavior, in thought. Oh, they can say it. With their lips, they show much love. But their heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? You, 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 you Christians out there, you can, you can speak a good game. How long can you keep it up before you <clears throat> shoot yourself in the foot? Hmm? How long? Not very long, because they always do. Sooner or later, boom, shoot themselves in the foot and expose themselves. And see, the closer we are getting to the redemption of the purchased possession, it is imperative that you and I walk according to this as strangers and pilgrims. Okay? All right? Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of heart. There it is again. As unto Christ. Singleness of heart. How can you have a singleness of heart with a master, your employer, who's a devil? What, what, fellow, what uh, fellowship hath uh, righteousness with unrighteousness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Huh? So, right there, what is the singleness of heart with the Lord? Or are you, is your heart divided? Huh? A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Huh? And see, that's Christianity unstable. Not with thy service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. A singleness of heart from the heart, a heart that belongs to the Lord. With good will, do, doing service as to the Lord, and not to men. And see, here is the thing, too, that you and I have to be cautious about. Because you can uh, put upon you, you can get it into your heads like this, well, I guess I got to. God's holding a gun in your head, huh? Well, I guess I got to help you. I guess I got to. You, you're, you, you're, you're, you're missing it. Because nowhere. Nowhere, you wicked, filthy, Calvinist, lying devil. Nowhere does our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, force you to do anything. Nowhere. Pharaoh. Pharaoh's heart was already gone. So, 
like a lot of you, you're gone. It's not that the Lord can't save you. But you want your cake and eat it too. You want to live that life. And the farther you go, we've talk, we talked about this, what was it, uh, the, on Wednesday. Okay, the further you go, the harder it's going to be to come back. And there is a point of no return for an individual. Not that the Lord can't save you. That's heresy. The Lord can save anybody. But it's never coercive. Okay, it's never coercive. Never. Never coercive. Okay? With goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men. We have to make the right choices. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, and what's good? What's good? Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And see now, now go back to Second Peter, uh, First Peter, chapter two, verses seventeen and eighteen. Now, okay, check this out. Seventeen and eighteen. Now. Honor all men. You can't get away from that at all. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Brotherhood. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Fear God. Honor the king. That's a loaded verse there. Loaded. And at verse 18, Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. So, honor all men. You can't get away from that all. You can't get away from that all. Well, honor all men. That's in reference to the uh, verses 13 and 14. That's honor the king. Okay? That's honor the king. The king represented, re representative of legislation, legal, government. Okay? So, all men. Yes, all men does encompass that. But it's like all men. Yeah, it's a sp specifically where it says all men is verses uh, 13 and 14. No, it isn't. It's, it's encompassed, yes, but all men. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. <laughs> There's a brother who I love. Unfortunately, sadly, we don't like each other. Unfortunately, because of this flesh, and we're going to address this in the next video, we can't get along down here on earth. And it's sad. I wish it weren't the case. But see, that happens, brethren. That happens. This gets in the way every time. Flesh does. More about that in the next video. Okay? But flesh gets in the way. All right? There are people out there who I believe are my brethren. But we don't like each other. Our flesh has gotten in the way. Okay? But see, if a brother who I don't care for, because our flesh has gotten into the way, came to me, it's Brad. I need you. I need to talk. Can you? I'll be there for you. That's the way that works. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Self explanatory. Honor the king. Honor the king. The, the ruler of your people, you know, go ahead and bow to him. Okay, that, that kind of stuff. The king, the, they say, hey, this is the law, okay. But, here's the thing. If man's law is in clear contradiction of Scripture, use your own common sense there. Okay. Does the Lord, do you really think 
the Lord would have you to do contrary to what he says in order to appease man? Well, make the Lord, how? How would you, when you would say something, well, if, if you do what man says, even though it's contrary to the scripture, that'll make the Lord look good. No, that'll make the Lord look like a hypocrite. Again, why do you think I despise free grace? Hmm? Hmm? Freely by his grace is in scripture. Show me free grace. Show it to me. Hey, you. I'll give you a thousand bucks on money I don't have. Show me free grace from the authorized version of the scriptures. You go on someplace. But see, there again, the example of Christianity unto the lost that will do almost anything to justify being just like the world. you got to be like the world to win the world. And see, honoring all men. Honoring all men. See, you and I, how do we honor all men? Well, real simply, uh, and we spoke about this yesterday, Matthew 7, verse 12, just one verse. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, uh, oh, by the way, the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> That's what Rome teaches. You might, some of you is like, no, that's not what it's says. Uh, <laughs> Rome says one thing and does another. That, that's that's uh, how the devils, the enemies of our Lord operate. You know, they, they, they give you um, uh, uh, lots of burdens, grievous to be borne, but they won't lift them up with uh, their own finger. They do all their, they say all these things, they make for a pretense, make long prayers, but inside they are full of dead men's bones. And you and I as saints, in this culture, in this time, where evil is good and good is evil, like, like I said to the brother yesterday, okay, America is an example of this. America sucks. The, what it has become. Okay, I know there, there are many a brethren that I know of who have served in the military and, you know, praise, you know, good, good, whatever. Thank you. But what the Jesuit order has done to this nation and the people that, the majority of the people that are being influenced, how, how, being showed the world in a moment of time, zippity doo -da. Satan has a lovely slave. Okay? And that has produced in these people. Good is evil and evil is good. And you and I as saints, when we go along walking according to Scripture, how do we honor men? By giving them that example as we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. You know, even, even the one enemy of mine who I hate with perfect hatred. He is still a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? He is still a spirit, soul, and body. And I despise that individual. Vile man, but he is still a spirit, soul, and body. And how do we honor men? How do you love your enemy? By demonstration of the truth in word and in deed. 
Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. The whole world is going to hell in a handbasket. Okay? And, and in the America, not in, you're out of, not in America, praise the Lord for you. It, it's different, I'm sure. Like I said to the one brother, it's like your nation, I, I can assure you, um, culturally, socially, is better than America. Okay? Because, you know, especially the children being raised with this um, thing of entitlement. Okay? You know, for example, you got a job, right? You're being, you're being paid to do a job. But see, the mentality that has been instilled in the society of America, and especially with, and you can see examples of this in those stupid TikTok videos, okay? Uh, they're doing the employee the favor. The employee is the one who dictates to the employer who is giving them the money to do what they say. It, it, it's backwards. And see, you and I as a saint, we honor men, we honor men by being single-hearted with the Lord and walking according to his counsel in Scripture, giving them an example of himself. In a time when nobody does that, especially the Christians. That's how you honor men. Galatians 6, verse 6 on to verse 10. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all things. I like that verse because that shows the teacher-student thing. Okay? Paul. Paul. Obviously was the teacher, give me a better word, mentor unto Timothy. Okay? Paul handed down to Timothy. Okay? Let him that is taught in the word, scripture, communicate unto him that teacheth all things. Okay? Someone who is called to this position, okay, who is taught in the word, is communicating unto you, okay, that teacheth in all good things, and there is none good but God. Okay? So... When one in this position is giving you scripture that you are to search yourself daily, okay? All right? See, that, that's, that's the thing in this position, brother. We are taught in the Word. And we share onto the body of Christ the Word that, that will help to enable them to, number one, search for themselves but to walk worthy of what we have been called to, ambassadors of Christ. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And that's what Christianity is. Sows to the flesh. But he that soweth to the capitalist spirit, the Lord, shall of the capitalist spirit, the Lord, reap life everlasting. Right here, and as I shared with the brother yesterday, and as the encouragement that came this morning. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season. We shall reap if we faint not. I know that, that and it it's, amuses me. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't amuse me. It's, uh, it's full of wonder. A lot of people hate me. A lot of people hate me and do not like me. That, I, that, that's full of wonder. I don't care at all about that, but, you know, um, especially a lot of you King James Bible believing Christians don't like me either. And you know what? I'm not too crazy about any of you either. Okay? There are brethren who I associate with that it's like, that's different. They're saints. Okay? They're saints. Uh, a lot of these people just like to join a group to be part of something. Lacking that singleness of heart with the Lord. 
And that is what this King James Bible believing Christianity is nowadays. That's all it is. That's all it is. But a lot of people would like me to go away. They would. They would. Um, that's not your call. That's his call. It's not my call. I'm not being forced to do this. I'm not being forced to do this. I, I could have gotten that book and just read and read and read and not done anything today uh, as for the body of Christ. But then again, this isn't about me, is it? And verse 9 there, I, there are days where I just want to quit. You know, um, and this and this is one of the things too. When you're in a position like this, um, you, I mean, even if I were to be like a Smiley Dave Daniels at Chick Publications, okay, who only gets angry at saints, okay, um, and that behind the scenes, um, even if I were to, you know, be this, I, I couldn't be that way. But even if I were, you would, you would still incur hatred or wrath or anger from other people. Okay? Because you know what they, are, they say about opinions? They're like armpits and everyone hands them and they all stink. Right? But we are admonished. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And as we have therefore opportunity... Here, here again, you're not getting away from this all. Let us do good unto all men. Distinction, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. How do you honor all men? How do you do good all unto all men? We are ambassadors for Christ. We walk our lives in accordance with the scriptures, rightly divided, by the way. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. But when they don't want to hear it, what's left? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The testimony, dear brother, sister, that you and I are going to leave behind is imperative, especially now. Especially right now. When you got Christianity is nothing more than a social club and justifies sin all the way. Our testimony of our Father, especially in these last days, is more imperative now than it was even last year. So our redemption draweth nigh. Sooner or later, brethren, sooner or later, that come up hither is going to happen. And see the gravity of when, and see, th 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 a lot of Christians, you don't get this. You don't want to. Once this dispensation changes, wow, the time of Jacob's trouble, faith and works, Not by grace through faith. How do we honor all men? How do we do good? And there's none good. But who? God. How do you love your enemy? How do you love your enemy? <laughs> how do you honor all men? How do you how do you love your enemy? How do you honor all men? <laughs> Verse 20 in 2 Corinthians 5. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. But of course. Of course. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. 
and especially with nowadays. When, like I said, even most people with this fake nonsensical Christianity stuff, when they have a person coming around, a Christian saying, God loves you, most people, not all, most people, it's like, okay, God loves me unconditionally according to you. He loves you so much, but yet he's going to send me to hell. Hmm. But he loves me. He loves you. He loves you. But if I don't follow suit, he's going to send me to hell. But he loves me unconditionally. Most people, most, can see through the veneer of these Christians. Most. Not all. Not all. Um, and, and especially atheists. And that's one of the reasons why I give more respect to an atheist than a Christian, usually. Because at least it's like you're telling me God loves me. It, God's love for you, it's at Calvary. You want that? you, you got to go the way he's prescribed. Okay? But when you tell lost people that God loves them unconditionally and they're rejecting Christ, you're lying to them. You're lying to them. And see, that was Satan's goal. Satan, through easy believism, through Catholicism, through Calvinism, through Lutheranism, through certain denominations of the Baptist thing, uh, through Jehos, through Mormonism, okay, whatever ism out there, Satan has done a very effectual job at making the faith that was once delivered unto the saints to look abhorrent unto the lost. God loves you! And see, we honor all men. How? By living as an example. As living as ambassadors for Christ. This, you, you, we cannot exhaust this topic enough. Why? Because it's lacking, especially in Christianity. And in a denomination that purports to be the last vestige of this, it is relegated to no different than, I'm talking about King James Bible believing Christianity. It's just another denomination like Methodist, like Lutheran, like Presbyterian. It's nothing more than that now. At one time, sure, it might have meant something but what does it mean now? First Peter chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the lust of the flesh, in the, in the flesh, excuse me, to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Not by coercion either. You have to make the right choice. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. There's that reference again. He's using the word Gentile as an example of those who are not. Okay? He's not denoting every single Gentile. Remember that. Remember that. Those who want you to deceive you, to bring you under the law may harp on that, say, well, see, you can't be a Gentile. You've got to become a Jew. <laughs> yeah. 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 Respect of person. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's continue. All right. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is re to him that is ready to judge the quick alive, thank you, brother, and the dead. Like I said. In a day when most people, Christian, oh, you're a Christian, you're going to tell me God loves me, right? 
Like, no, I, you've heard that before, huh? No, God doesn't love you. God's wrath is for you. You, you, you would encounter somebody like that? It was like, it's like, yeah, oh, you, you know, handing them a track. It's like, oh, I'm, I suppose you're going to tell me God loves me, right? I looked at that guy. It's like, no, God's wrath is for you, pal. You should have seen the look on that guy's face. <laughs> what? Like, no, God doesn't love you. Aren't Christians, you're, you're a Christian. I was like, no, I'm not. That and that and that like blew his uh, circuitry right there, and that that led on to an effective witness of our Lord Jesus Christ. The the lost people have been conditioned, have been trained as to what a Christian is. And what is a Christian? Not according to this. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Don't worry about it. You're too serious. God doesn't care about these little things. <laughs> God's not specific. <laughs> Honor all men. Honor all men by honoring the Lord and walking according to the scriptures to be an example unto them. For them to behold when we go up don't forget that testimony, boy. The guy doused me with 7-Up, uh, and the people saw that. Got rocks kicked at me before. People saw that. Okay? And see, you got to be careful. You got to make the right choice. Because if you go into this, well, I guess I have to. Beware. Because when you have that mentality, well, I guess I have to, you are referring to our Father as a coercive God. And our God is not coercive, despite what the Dudley Do-Right uh, bad guy, yeah, wants you to believe in all Calvinists. Because, you know, the God of Calvinism, by the way, is a cruel, coercive God. The God of Rome is clearly Satan. Okay? <laughs> Verses 8 under 13 now in um, 1 Peter 4. And above all things, have fervent charity, which is self-sacrifice, among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Oh, I guess I have to. No, you don't. And if you're doing something for the Lord with the, well, I guess I have to, do you realize, seriously, I want, I want you to think about this. When you go begrudgingly with this, well, I'm saved, I have to, you don't have to. The minute you're saying, I have to, as of being forced, you are putting upon our Father the title of coercive. A saint makes bad decisions, but also right decisions, because we want to. We want to use hospitality one to another without grudging. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. As every man hath received a gift, what gift is that? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. The gift of salvation by grace through faith. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And you can tie that in with um, Romans chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. 
See, if you take it upon yourself, who's doing it? Hmm? You think I put myself in this position? There are a lot out there who think I did. <laughs> Crazy boy. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look at that verse. And when you got some twit who gets deluded by the Jesuit order in the cemetery school coming out with yea hath God said in their textual criticism, the Greek and the Hebrew, which one? Okay. Who's getting the glory? Which God is getting the glory there? Because <laughs> cemeterians. Without exception, so far, sooner or later, you, you, you can talk to a cemetery with their little, it's like, you know, a person, just a little wabbit, myself and a cemeterian, we, we did that, that does not work, <laughs> okay? Um, I, I've talked to, uh, uh, more recently too, um, I have talked with a cemeterian, but I keep that, it's like, you know, can I give you a trap? It's like, oh no, it's like, oh, yeah, you think, <laughs> good luck, buddy. <laughs> I said, said to them, it's like, good luck at the great white throne of judgment. And I offended them. <laughs> it's like, good, okay. They come out of a cemetery in school, a cemetery school, with yea, half God said, textual criticism. They are their own standard. Who gets the glory? When we're honoring men, who gets the glory? You because you're such a nice guy, or I guess I got to? Or the Lord because you're doing it His way? Love it. And, so, and now here's the thing. And here is where people will... They endure for a while. But when tribulation, or, or no, no, when persecution become, uh, cometh because of the word, you know the thing about the, uh, the seeds, the parable thing? When persecution cometh because of the word, by and by they are what? Offended. And they leave. When the rubber hits the road, when you got, when you're, you know, you've, you're making the right decision. You're going to follow the Lord according to the scripture. And then you're going to get flack for it. That, that's an inevitable. That you can't. The only way you can escape that. There is a way you can escape that. Be a Christian. Be a free grace Christian. Believe and receive. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. The world, Christianity, goes this way. God wants you to go that way. The world and Christianity, the road is broad. You don't like it. Go to that church if you don't like that one. Go to this one. Find a Bible that suits you. Broad! Wide! Straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. And when you walk the straight and narrow way, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. My father happy, I'm happy. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Exceeding joy. And see, when you get into that, when you get to that point, you make the right decision, you're going to walk according to the scriptures. Because brethren, 
God's not forcing you, again, to walk according to His Word. He's not. You have to decide. This is what my father says. Now, if I don't do what he says, he's going to burn me inside. He can make all kinds of things go foul for me. But he's not going to force me to walk according to his dictate. It doesn't work like that. But when you do, Proverbs 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. And unto man he said, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. See, nowadays, especially, uh, you know, Brad, why do you harp so much on Christianity? Because it's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. I have seen, especially on YouTube, I have seen Christianity. All right, that, and King James Bible believe in Christianity is no different now than any other denomination. The difference is that, that here's the standard. But a lot of these King James Bible believing Christians just want to belong to a clique. Nice. It's like the, the one brother um, who, <laughs> who um, made that one disturbing comment referred to him and referred to an individual as if he were the master well I'm just relegating you know I take out the trash for a certain individual wow put anyone on a pedestal there man oh this ugh. Hmm. But see, Christianity is of the world. And the world says, and Christianity usually are in cahoots. On the surface, they, they seem to oppose each other. Right? But what do both justify themselves? The world will do one, one thing, jump through a hoop to justify themselves. Christianity does one thing. Go through the hoops to do what? To justify themselves. Because it's all about themselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. Now we, saints, have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, lowercase s, the one that is imparted, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Man's wisdom. Philosophy, the love of man's wisdom. Cal, like uh, uh, John MacArthur, uh, what's that guy, uh, Jesuit James White. Okay. Gene Kim, you ever listen to that guy, man? Wow. And then, of course, you got Mr. Breaker Breaker, who is more identical to his master, Ruckman, than many people give him credit for. He, he really is. He is almost, almost. He doesn't have the spit and fire that Rahman had, but he is almost a copy and paste of Ruckman. A lot of people don't give that guy that credit. He is, he is a very good imitation. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, capital S, 
for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. That's right. Because who judges him? The Lord. How? Through the scripture. Who hath known the mind of the Lord, that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now, in the vain shoe of that Dudley Do-Right scoundrel, uh, bad guy, um, who tells you that your faith isn't yours, it's actually Jesus' faith, then why are you still sinning? You never answered that, you devil. But um, there are those out there that say that we have the mind of Christ. The actual mind of Christ. Um, uh, uh, the, the Hagen guy who did the shh, shh, woo, that guy, that nutbag, uh, a lot of them Pentecostals will say, well, we have the mind of Christ. The actual, literal mind of Christ. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Think about that now. Stop, time out, think about that. When you got someone telling you that the mind <laughs> that you have is actually Jesus Christ's mind, there are those out there who say that. Then why do I have an evil thought? Why do I have any th evil thoughts at all? Christ never sinned. But yet, if I had the mind, the actual literal mind of Christ. What does that mean? We have the mind of Christ. Well, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And now I see why, where, where, why you, I get it. I get it. Thank you. Philippians chapter 2. What is the mind of Christ? What is the mind of Christ? Philippians 2, verses 3 on to verse 8. Hey, Dudley Do-Right guy. You watching? Pay attention, you stinking devil. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Look at me, look at me. Vain glory. Glory of men. But uh, in lowliness of mine, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, Brad, put your name there, but every man also on the things of others. About verse 4, you have to beware of one thing. There are those who will project in order to evade self-examination. What am I talking about? There are others who will, who will not examine themselves in Scripture to take, as they say, a self-inventory. So what will they do? They will deflect that and put their attention on you unjustly, not out of a lowliness of mind, but to divert attention. It's like, okay, Stephen Anderson, the guy's a sodomite, okay? He's a sodomite. That guy teaches the Calvinistic reprobate thing that sodomites can't be saved. Sodomites can be saved. Absolutely they can. Absolutely. Okay, God gave them over. You don't want the truth? Fine. God will let you go. It's like, go ahead. Go ahead. Live in your debauchery and sin all you want. But that doesn't mean that God cannot or will not save them if they are broken of themselves. You don't turn away from your sins. You couldn't do that if I held a loaded bazooka at your forehead. You couldn't do that. The repenting, the turning that you are doing is of your self-righteousness, which Christian and Christianity exalts. Okay? That's the repentance. All right? So you got to beware of this thing of deflection, of projecting. Okay, Stephen Anderson uh, has violence, uh, violence and speech in action. He would, you know, uh, what can a sodomite do? 
And uh, he said this, and uh, the brother, you, um, I don't know, I haven't checked if you found the link for that, because I'd like to, uh, I'd like to address that in a video. Where Stephen, if one of you, hey, one of you watching, if you can put a link or email me the link where Stephen Anderson, when he was asked, what can a sodomite do? Stephen Anderson said something around the lines of, kill themselves. Now that's a projection of self-deflection, if I've ever seen one. Stephen Anderson knows that his sodomy is wrong. And how is he, what is he doing against it? He's deflecting. You got to watch out for people like that, brethren. Okay? You can't escape self-examination. And that is avoided by verse 3 and verse 5. Let's read this again. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Okay? Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Okay? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay? So, so what? We have the literal mind of Christ, like we have the literal faith of Jesus? Okay, if we have the literal mind of Christ, then why do I think wicked thoughts? If I had the actual literal faith of Jesus, why do I still sin? You know, if you just <laughs> logically think about that, it's like, it's like the thing with the God loves you. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. <laughs> uh, the same principle. Okay, if, if this is, if this ain't my, my faith, which it's, our faith is the answer to God's grace. Okay, that's, that's our part. But um, if it's actually the faith of Jesus, Jesus never sinned. God can't sin. Then why am I still sinning? If it's the actual literal mind of Christ, okay, then why do I have a, a filthy thought in here? Come on, people. Come on. You know, you got to grow up, people. Many of you are out of high school, out of the high school click mentality. Who, now, this is what the mind of Christ is. Lowliness. Look. Who being in the form of God, God has a spirit, soul, and body, okay? Thought it not be thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And the Bibles mess this, check that out yourself. The Bibles mess up verse 6, something fierce, Okay? but made himself of no reputation. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, washing the rank, nasty, stinking feet of fishermen. The mind of Christ equate with charity, which is what? Self-sacrifice. The mind of Christ means the mind of what? Servant. Christ first came here. He came here for what? To die. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, there it is, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of serving others, walking as an example unto man. That's how you honor all men. That's how you honor all men. And very quickly, you know, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, where, and I, I've run into this about people trying to justify the Sermon on the Mount doctrine for us today. Uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 3, under verse 5. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Separation from that being other, different, but also self-sacrifice. 
do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is the law and the prophets. Okay, the doctrine of godliness crosses dispensational lines. Paul is referring on to what we just read in Philippians with that comparison of how Christ took upon himself the form of a servant, washed the nasty, rank, stinking feet of the disciples, of the apostles, okay? Servant, self-sacrifice, okay? That's what that's taught. That's, that's what Paul is talking about. The thing of godliness, being different than that. You honor all men because all men have been trained to see Christianity in a certain shoe. And when you, as a saint, demonstrate unto them the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, he is proud. Yeah, proud. He is proud. Okay? The doctrine according to godliness. Self-sacrifice. Being different than that. Christianity. No self-sacrifice. Mingling in. Adulterating with that. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Gain is godliness, huh? Yeah, you take on the persona of a guy from the north northeast, and then you get all the people, well, he looks like him. Oh, he's okay because he's got the look, he's got the mannerisms, he's got the sound, he's even got the same backdrop. So, hey, he's the one, the visual stimuli thing, eye service, men pleasers. Gain is godliness. Gain the following, gain subscribers, huh? Okay. Hey, make sure you like and subscribe. You talk about a pretentious statement. Whenever I watch a video and I hear somebody, says, oh man, you're going to make me vomit. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. <laughs> it's 2 o'clock. <laughs> um, praise the Lord. Like I said, this was not... A, this was a collaborated effort. Uh, a brother and myself, the Lord, a brother and myself, kind of put this thing together. Uh, no, the, the, the Lord, the Lord, you know, did the putting together. It, it, it's just we were talking about it in the verse here, verse here, verse there, and it's like had the sticky notes. It's like, and I told the brother, it's like, <laughs> now I'm just gonna puzzle piece this thing together. So. Hopefully this is, hopefully, hopefully, the Lord be praised. The Lord be praised by you honoring men, by honoring, the, you honor all men, by honoring what the Lord hath said. Thank you, brother. Thank you for watching this if you do. We love you. Praying for you. Um, prayer requests. Um, our dear brother Jeff um, needs prayer. He, he, Brother Jeff has given me permission long ago to make mention of him like this. So I'm not worried about that. Um, he's got some new health issues. He, he needs your prayers. Okay, So do pray for him. Um, pray for the brethren. Pray for one another. Love you. We'll see you in the next video, which is coming up pretty quickly. Got a question?